It's still the, uh, you know, you can put the label on Extreme Couture. You could say it's American Top Team. You could, you, it's, it's a bunch of guys that want what's best for the other guy. And that's, I think it's that t- type of teamwork that you actually need to find. It's not, there's not a team. I mean, you could be like a t- team alpha male, you know, over in, you know, Sacramento. But then you got guys, uh, you know, training in, you know, Colorado. It's just, as long as you got a bunch of guys that actually want to do, once was best for you, then you know you're all good. Talk about this point in your career. I mean, we know everyone else goes in. You're going to put on a show, but a couple of losses are too late. Is that weighing heavy on you at all? Feeling the need to, to get back into the win column? No, I mean, uh, there's always a need to win. Uh, but it, I, I best uh, probably the best way, like you know how you, everybody always says it's the UFC experience. Uh, but the only way you can capitalize, you know, like bottle up the UFC experience is it's called a Roy Nelson fight experience and if you watch a Roy Nelson fight you know exactly what that fight experience actually is because I've watched some fights and I'm like I don't know if I want to come back and watch this again but every time you watch Roy Nelson you're like I can't wait till the next one like it doesn't matter you always want to watch the next one so when you get a matchup like Jared Rochel he might not be able to say that same thing that you always want to watch a Jared Rochel fight what do you think when you get a matchup like that, knowing that he's probably going to be relying on wrestling, probably going to try to stall you up against the cage? Uh, you know, from that standpoint, you know, I always look at this is going to be the best Jared. Uh, and he might come out with flying arm bars, flying triangles. He, you know what? He, you know, he's been working on his striking. He might come out and try to knock me out, which, you know, it always takes two to make a good, you know, good tango. Uh, but, you know, I'm always there to oblige whatever it is. I mean, if we want to go to the ground, I'll, you know, we'll go to the ground. Like, I, either way, it's going to be fun and exciting if you see me on my back or if you see me on top. Like, you're like, oh, I don't know, what's Roy going to do there? Like, I mean, everybody was talking about, like, my last fight with Josh. Like, I think I had four takedowns. And I think that's four more than any of, any of my whole career in the UFC. And they're like, whoa, what's going on there? It's like, no, I got tools. It's just, I don't need that. You only need a hammer and a nail. <laughs> about his wrestling and the style that he does bring to the table. Uh, no, Jared's, you know, definitely one of the top guys. Uh, you know, he just he's coming off a uh, uh, beating, I think it's like three or four wins, uh, in, you know, in the UFC. He's just coming off a uh, win off of uh, Stephen Struve, who knocked out Stipe, and Stipe just got a title shot. I mean, he's right there. The You know, the cuss thing is just, he's just not that well-known to the fans just because of his fight style. And I think uh, fight style is definitely, or... We'll say the Roy Nelson experience I bring uh, is definitely why you keep on watching the UFC. How willing would you be to take it to the ground with him? Uh, you know, I, it, I'm ready for a championship, so I have to be willing to take it to the ground. I mean, look at Verdum. If you're not willing to take it to the ground with Verdum, then uh, you might not have a good chance. Well, you turned 40 later this year. How, how much longer can the Roy Nelson experience continue on? Uh, you know what? I, I talked to Dan about it, and as long as you're competitive, who cares? I mean, that's the, pretty much the thing is, uh, especially with Randy, you know, over at Extreme, you know, I talked to Randy and pick his brain a little bit about, you know, about fighting. It's about, it's about what your body can take. Uh, it's about how competitive you think you can always win. Um, and then plus have, have that great team around you. If you have a great team around you, you know, like, I mean, I got Fritz and I got, I got Eric, I got James, I got, I got Tyler, like I got my boy, I got, I mean, I got, there's just so many people. I mean, there's. Uh, great sponsors from you know South Coast Music Beach. Like there's just there's so many guys that are. If you got a good package deal around you, you can do really well. Who you got the main event this weekend? Steve Thompson, Oh, that one. I thought you were talking about the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, you know what? That one's definitely an interesting one. Um, I think it's stylistic. I think it's wrestler versus striker, um, and. You know, I think for the UFC, it's always, you know, the Johnny McWay. You know, like, I think that's what everybody wants to know. You know, did he not have Dolce this week? You know, Team Jake down. Like, I, I like, I don't think it really matters because uh, Johnny always comes out to try to knock you out. So, it's a good – he he'll oblige to stand it. So, that, that's, the, that's the, the beauty of that type of fight is, uh, is when you got a wrestler that goes, no, no, we'll stand. And, and you're okay with that. But – if he gets in trouble, he can always go to the, you know, take it to the mat. So I think that's a thing that definitely weighs better in his favor. So I mean, what is the, um, what's the odds thing? Kendrick's two to one right now. What's four to one to start up? Well, see, it's a lot closer. So I, I still would probably go with the bookies. Yeah. That was smart. <laughs>
last question I got for you, Vincent Henderson. We saw him head over to Bellator. What's your thoughts on that? Do you think this might be the start of something new, or do you think this was just kind of an isolated decision? Um, I don't. I really don't know. I mean, it's. It, I think it's really what's right for you. Uh, you know, like if you're going for a sponsorship, if you're just going for more money, like it. The real, th- real at the end of the day, it's about we're in the business, so it's about. So it has to be about the dollars and cents. Uh, so as long as uh, I'm sure, ben, you know, Benson's family's now happy. Um, so, I mean, I really don't know the circumstances. I mean, he might be getting paid like you know, like a fade or like ten million dollars. Like, I, I'm over here. It's cool. I, I'll, I'll get my own thing that says UFW. Are you surprised, or when did you know I can knock people out and I don't have to use as much jujitsu? Like, when was a good turning point for you to say, okay, I'm good enough for this now? Uh, you know what? I, the first time was uh, I was actually fighting another wrestler, and and I just happened to knock him out, and I was like, wow, that was easy, and then I just kept it up. And are you ever worried, like you're training too much of X and not enough of Y, or do you still do everything the exact same? No, I still pretty much do the everything. I probably uh, spend a little less time doing uh, jiu-jitsu uh, just because it's something that I concentra- uh, I did for years and years and years. And uh, it's kind of like if you're really good at math, you kind of you focus more on the part that you're not very good at. Uh, so I just focus more on striking because uh, I still think I'm intermediate at you know, strike. I just, I just know I got heavy hands. And does it ever like when can you? When do you start notice like I can pick people apart? Not like Floyd Mayweather level, but I can. I'm starting to pick people apart more than just having heavy hands. Have you found that in your training? Well, there's, there's a difference between like picking people apart. Um, like with Floyd, that's picking people apart and run. Pick people apart, run. Pick apart, you know, run. Like there's, it's called. I call that tag. I don't call that fight. Uh, fighting is where. If we're on the end of the street and there's no time limit, uh, who's going to win the fight? That's that's what I consider fighting. Um, I, I don't know if that's an old school way of thinking, uh, but like the new guys are more like, how can I survive for 15 minutes and make it get the points on the judges? Because they do want to leave it in the hands of judges. I just I I'm not in that. My philosophy is about how to finish the guy. Why is it that sometimes you get heavyweights, they can fight five times a year, and then some will fight once a year? And I mean, do you think it's more important that a fighter stay as active as possible to stay relevant? Because it looks like at times the division's getting really, really thin, but there's all these guys you just haven't seen, and they're still tough. They're just not fighting as... Yeah, no, like for me, I'm, like, I like to be active. I, if I could fight six times a year, I would. I'd be like Donald Sorority of the heavyweight. It's just most heavyweights aren't... Uh, they either don't like to train or they're just really not that durable. And like Cain Velasquez would be, you know, one of those guys just like for some reason, heavyweights, you know, as soon as they start training a little hard, they, you know, kind of fall off and get hurt. Because, you know, we're big guys. And if you get hit by a big guy, it tends to hurt. Is it harder for you to find training partners? Because you're a big guy and you're trying to train for other big guys and there's really only like 12 of you. So is it harder? To, do you have to go with lightweights and? Middleweights and like for for us heavyweights, it's 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 not that hard to find a heavy a, a heavyweight, but to find a, a quality heavyweight is because most of the people that are over two hundred pounds are playing um, that are athletes are playing the uh, higher level sports of like football, baseball, basketball, where they're making millions and millions and millions of dollars. Versus like, why would you do that? Versus coming to fight to MMA unless you like fighting. That's only that's it's just heavyweights or people over two hundred pounds. They want to you want to they want to go make they're in the business of making money, so they want to make as much money as possible if they're an athlete. So we're gonna play that another sport. And when you, I have a weird time looking at Cain Velasquez, which I just think that is pure aggression. And then I have a really weird time looking at Verdum. Can you break him down for me? Because he's almost like a tricky jujitsu. He's great at jujitsu and he catches people. But how do you how do you find people's little holes and how do you exploit? No, uh, I think with Verdum, you know, Verdum's a you know a complete mixed martial artist. Like he's one of those guys that like if you you just have a takedown and you got and you're willing to fight off your back, that's the thing with Verdum. Verdum's like, please take me down. I have no problem being. Here. I mean, I've, I when he fought over over him now uh, the one time when he lost, he actually 
happens to go sit to guard because he's like, come on down, buddy. And and that's the that's the thing is you've got to be a complete mixed martial artist if you want to be a champion. And, and I think Verdum is definitely one of the more complete ones because he has complete stand-up and then he has a complete bottom game. He, the wrestling part is the, the in-between part, but it really doesn't matter because you start standing. And then if you end up on your back, you got something you know, there for you too. And last question is, you and I think it was IFL, you and Rothwell came and you guys were playing there. Is there anything that's still surprising you that's out there? Because you've been in the game long enough and you've seen, you know, the, the Sage North Cut and the Conor and all these. Are there anything that surprises you? And is there anything that, where do you see the game going in terms of mixed martial arts? Uh, I, my hope is to see more, uh, fight, uh, more new guys coming up that actually want to fight. I think, uh, you know, coming up with the, like, I call it the Roy Nelson experience because if you watch a Roy Nelson fight, you're like, dude, I want to watch that guy. I don't care, win, lose, whatever. I'm going to come watch his fights. Well, there's some guys you watch, and you're like, eh, I don't know if I want to watch that one again. And that's the thing is you got to – this is definitely a entertainment sport, but it's also about fighting. It's not like boxing about building records because if you're worried about building records, it's not that hard to do. You can, you can build a record by going, hey, I'm going to fight that guy, that guy, that guy, and that guy. And then when the payday comes, I'll fight the big one. You know, like, uh, I think, was Mayweather, Mayweather, his last fight, who did he fight? Berto. Berto, like, and, and you're like, who the hell is this Berto guy? And it was just because he's like, oh, this is my last one. Last one on my contract. I get the W. Like, so that's not real boxing. Like, when you're like, when you want them to go, oh, I want to watch the Mayweather Pacquiao fight. You know, there, everybody was clamoring for that because Pacquiao was really good. At, but then when Pacquiao got knocked out, they're like, eh, I don't know if I really want to see that fight again. You know, like it was one because everybody, but then they're like, oh, but Pacquiao's beatable. You know, like if Mayweather lost and Pacquiao, like they, they'd be like, oh, maybe it's a decline. Oh, let's watch that fight. You know, so boxing is a completely different beast where it's all set up. We're, we're more like regular real sports, like NFL, baseball, where if you if you basically bat 500, that means you're going against the best guys in the world. Like if you're you know you win some and you lose some, that means it's anybody's given day. You know it's like, uh, you know, like we'll use football. Like nobody usually goes throughout the whole day, uh, the whole football season undefeated. And if they do, they lose that one game at the end. And that's the one that all that matters. It doesn't matter that you won 16 games straight, right? So that's the thing about with MMA is we don't have that season type stuff. So it's like you're going to win some, lose some, win some, lose some, unless you pick your opponent. I'm one of those guys that I never pick my opponent. I just go out there and just fight. Whoever they throw in front of me, let's go do it. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you.